On a warm summer day, August 4, 1944, the bustling streets of Amsterdam masked an atmosphere thick with fear and uncertainty. The Second World War had plunged Europe into a state of unprecedented chaos, and the shadow of the Holocaust loomed large. In a quiet corner of this historic city, a simple yet extraordinary story of human resilience and tragedy was about to take a fateful turn. This is the story of Anne Frank, the young Jewish diarist whose life and words would echo through generations. For over two years, the Frank family had hidden in the secret annex, a concealed section of Otto Frank's business premises at Prinzinger 263. Otto, his wife Edith, their daughters Margot and Anne, along with the Van Pels family and a dentist named Fritz Pfeffer, had created a semblance of life within the narrow confines of their hidden world. The outside world had become a place of unimaginable peril for Jews, and the secret annex offered a fragile haven from the horrors unfolding across Europe. And Frank, a spirited and insightful girl, had been chronicling her thoughts, fears, and dreams in her diary, which she named Kitty. Her words painted a vivid picture of life in hiding, the tensions, the small joys, and the ever-present dread of discovery. Anne's diary was more than just a record of events. It was a window into her soul, a testament to the enduring human spirit in the face of darkness. But on that day, August 4, 1944, their fragile sanctuary was shattered. A tip from a Dutch informer, whose identity remains a mystery to this day, led the Gestapo to their hiding place. At approximately 10.30 a.m., the dreaded knock came. SS officers, led by Carl Silberbauer, stormed the building. Their heavy boots and harsh commands echoed through the walls, sending waves of terror through the inhabitants of the annex. The occupants were dragged from their hiding place, bewildered and terrified. For two years, they had lived in constant fear of this moment, and now it had arrived with brutal suddenness and then Margot clung to their parents, their faces pale with shock. Otto Frank, the pillar of strength for his family, tried to remain composed, but the gravity of the situation was unmistakable. As they were led away, and thoughts must have been a whirlwind of fear and confusion, the world she had known, confined though it was, had been violently torn apart. The diary that had been her confidant, her solace, was left behind, its pages filled with the voice of a girl who dreamed of freedom and a future beyond the war. The Frank family, along with the others, were taken to Westerbork transit camp. The conditions were harsh, but it was only the beginning of their harrowing journey. On September 3, 1944, they were crammed into cattle cars and transported to Auschwitz, the infamous death camp. The train ride lasted three days each hour descent into a nightmare. Upon arrival at Auschwitz, the men and women were separated. Otto Frank was torn from his family, a moment that would haunt him for the rest of his life. And Margot and Edith faced the brutal reality of the women's camp, where starvation, disease, and brutality were the daily fare. And then Margot, who had always been close, clung to each other for support. In late October 1944, and in Margot were transferred to Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. Conditions there were even more appalling. The camp was overcrowded, and disease was rampant. The sisters' health deteriorated rapidly. In early 1945, just weeks before the camp was liberated by British forces, Margot and then succumbed to typhus, their young lives extinguished in the cruelest of circumstances. The war ended, but for Otto Frank, the nightmare continued. He was the sole survivor of the family, liberated from Auschwitz by Soviet troops. Returning to Amsterdam, he was consumed by the desperate hope that his daughters might have survived. That hope was dashed when he learned of their fate. Among the few remnants of his family's life in hiding was Anne's diary, which had been saved by Meep Gies, one of the Dutch helpers who had risked their lives to protect the occupants of the annex. Reading Anne's words, Otto was overwhelmed by her insight and maturity. 
The diary was a poignant record of a young girl in a world amidst the horrors of war. It was also a powerful reminder of the millions of voices silenced by the Holocaust. Determined to honor his daughter's legacy, Otto decided to publish the diary. In 1947, the diary of a young girl was released, capturing the hearts and minds of readers around the world, and Frank's diary has since been translated into numerous languages. It remains one of the most poignant and influential accounts of the Holocaust. Her words have transcended time, offering a stark reminder of the horrors of war and the indomitable human spirit. Anne's dreams, her fears, her hopes for a better world, live on in her diary, a beacon of light amidst the darkest chapter of human history. The story of Anne Frank is not just a story of a young girl's life cut tragically short. It is a story of resilience, of the enduring power of the human spirit, and of the profound impact that one voice can have. Anne's diary continues to educate and inspire, reminding us of the importance of tolerance, empathy, and the relentless pursuit of peace. As we remember Anne Frank and the millions of others who perished in the Holocaust, we are called to reflect on the past and commit ourselves to building a future free from hatred and oppression. And Frank's voice, preserved in the pages of her diary, speaks to us across the decades. A powerful testament to the enduring human spirit and the unbreakable bond of family. Even in the face of unimaginable horror, 